Hey friends, it's Renee. I am finally here to do the sell a circle bag with lining and a zipper pocket. I know it's been weeks since I said I'd get it done and I did one video and totally messed it up and I was gonna edit it and I thought it'd take too much to edit. So I'm starting over again and we're gonna do the lining, uh, the circle bag with the lining. So let me show you a few things. Let me move you over here. I'm gonna shake you up a little bit and move you down. Okay, so here's the pattern piece. It's the free pattern with Sally Tomato. You get the pattern piece and you get a sheet of paper that gives you the instructions as far as materials and supplies. So what I did is I took the pattern piece and I printed it twice and taped it together and made this pattern. That would be your size. Actually, the actual size, if you use this pattern, would be smaller because you gotta have a 3 8 seam allowance. So what I did is I took this piece and added a half an inch all the way around and made my own pattern piece with this. Now, if you don't want to add anything, just stick to all the um, measurements with Sally Tomato that she gives you on the instruction sheet. But if you want to add a half an inch to make your bag a little bit bigger, then, then, um, cause it's pretty small, then the original pattern, then just, I went around, just add a half inch all the way around. And that's what I used to cut out my pieces. Then, um, since I added a half inch all the way around, I had to add inches to my gusset. I only added it to the bottom gusset. So I added 16, I think I made it 16 inches. Yeah, 16 inches. And I think it's normally, what does she call it for on the bottom gusset? 14. So I add two inches to it since I add a half an inch all the way around because I'm making the larger pattern. So that's my gusset. And what I also did is you want to put your name tag on first before you attach your lining based on your lining. So you attach your name tag first. And then you want to do your zipper pocket to the lining before you baste all your pieces. So I've already drawn the zipper um, part. Also, the size zipper I used, pocket I used was 8 by 12. And I'm probably going to end up trimming it to keep it out of the seam allowance. But that's what I started with, 8 by 12. So let's start with the zipper. And we're just gonna do our normal zipper, how we attach a normal zipper. I drew a box a half an inch, and then I did a line down the center, which is a quarter inch, to make it the center spot. And I did, how long is the zipper? Let's see, this pocket, six inches, is a zipper um, opening. Not pocket, but opening. I'm gonna keep it in my, my curl of my thread. I don't feel like changing it. So you sew around the outer part of your um, box for your zipper opening. I don't know how to do this. And then oops, went a little too far. I can take these pieces off. So just remember before we're going to attach all the lining base it to our main pattern pieces but before you do that you need to do your name tag and you need to do your zipper pocket to the line and then we're going to attach this. I already attached it with my uh, back zipper gusset and my front zipper gusset and what I did was I put woven fuse on my lining pieces for the zipper gussets and for this bottom gusset. And then I put Decaville light out of the seam and I put woven fuse over that um, on each piece. On the main pieces, that's how I did, I did a Decaville light and then I did woven fuse on top of that. But on the lining pieces, I just did woven fuse too. 
I hope that doesn't confuse you. And then for the strap, I did my normal three inches wide. That's what I like to do. And so it ends up being what? Uh, three quarters of an inch wide. Yeah, three quarters of an inch wide. And so there's my strap. I mean, my um, uh, crossbody. And then here's my handle. And then I don't have the chain it calls for. You can order it from Sally Tomato, but I didn't. So I just made another strap. Where's my strap? Here it is. So I made a strap, and this is the other one. I just did one. I went ahead and did all my straps to save time. Um, so this is going to be my, this is in place of the chain. So it is five inches long, and I think I did it three inches wide. Yeah. So you need two of those. And on my crossbody strap, I only did 41 inches. I think I was running out of material. <laughs> So I did 41 inches. I think normally I would do probably, oh, maybe 45 to, I think it called, normally calls for like 42 to 60. But since we're going to be adding this as our chain, that's going to add length to the crossbody. So 41 might be pushing it a little bit on some people, like us larger people like me. <laughs> might need a longer strap to go around our body. But I think this is going to work. So that's what I did with the handles. And then we'll work on this in a minute. So let's finish our zipper. And so I did this part. Now I'm going to cut open this part. This is our zipper pocket. And you can either use your knife and cut it or you can just Fold it in half and cut it with scissors and then cut the rest away. I just, depends on what type of mood I'm in. Mood I'm in to how I do it. And the thickness of your material too. So we cut out our V's closer to the corner. We just trim that string. The uh, vinyl, the faux leather, is from Bodio, and this fabric is from this place near, um, sort of near me, that has very inexpensive fabric, and it's a, it's a gem. I went on my birthday back in March. A friend of mine told me about it, and I never went, so I decided, you know, I'm going to go on my birthday. And I went on my birthday, so we're just going to do that. We cut it open, and we just push it through. So I went on my birthday, and man, a lot. I got, this was like, I got probably two yards for a dollar. And then they had, on this one table, they had buy one, get two free, I think it was. And so... I came out with three bags of fabric, and this is faux leather and uh, waterproof canvas and canvas fabric. I hit the jackpot. That made my birthday for sure. So we just turn this to the back. This is always a struggle with me. And I'm going to take it to the iron and press it down. So hang on just a minute. My other iron died on me, so I had to go get another one, and I had, I bought from Walmart, which I hate buying it from there because these break so easily. But when you're in a pinch, you do what you gotta do. Call this thing clapper. 
to help keep it pressed. I got my clapper um, for Christmas last year. I was using a regular piece of wood and it wasn't shaped, but I asked for a clapper. My son got me a clapper. He was like, what in the world is a clapper? I go, it's a wooden block. Hold this down for a minute. And let's add our zipper. So now we stick our zipper behind here. And I just did a eight inch zipper as wide as the pocket itself, and then I'll trim it. So I'm going to use some, put my little board away. I'm going to use some double side tape. This is from Dollar Tree. It's a quarter inch. Save some money. Of course, it's not a dollar anymore. It's a dollar twenty-five. And cut that. If you're wondering about my elbow, I face planted again today. Last Christmas, I face planted on the back steps, brick steps, coming up the steps actually, and fractured my nose. And today I slipped on a wet floor and face planted, but I didn't fracture my nose. I just hope it doesn't end up being black, black and blue tomorrow. But I did bust my elbow, so I've been icing it and took some ibuprofen. Getting old is not for wimps. Just saying. Okay, so I'm going to take off the top first. I haven't been in my sewing room in a month. I just, it's been so busy and I really kind of didn't want to get in here. Just kind of didn't want to sew. But once I'm in here, I am just like in heaven. Are y'all like that? I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm going to remove the bottom tape. I used to not do the double sided tape because it gummed up my needle so bad. In fact, I need to alcohol my needle. Um, but I have found if you use non stick and keep your watch on your needle, see, I got a little sticky part right there I can see and I have these alcohol wipes I actually got these to clean off stuff when like cups and stuff because I was um with my silhouette camera I was putting stains on cups and selling them and so now I'm using them for this too my poor machine needs cleaning so bad so Clean your needle, keep it clean, just keep an eye on that. And I've only gotten my needle threader to work uh, maybe two times, three times since I've had it. So I don't mess with it. It's not a big deal to me because even though I may not be able to see it or it gives me a hard time, I just reach over and I bought a bunch of these little needle threaders and you just thread it, you just pull it through and thread it. And there you go. No stress, it is what it is. Okay, so we got that. Now let's place the bottom part of the zipper on correctly. So I do want to change my thread now for this. Put that to the side, get some new thread. And do I want to do red? No, I don't think I want to do red. Let's see if I have a peach. I'm just doing white. 
in the bunker there. All my threads in this drawer over here. Where, oh where? I do have some, it's not really, it's just like white, so let's see. This is actually my embroidery thread, but glide thread is just like embroidery thread. Don't want to do that? Why not? I have a uh, Janome, old Janome, 97, 9750, 97, 9700 something um, that I bought. Goodness. Almost nine, 12 years ago. And I found a Janome dealer that I got this Janome from, which is a HD 3000. That's what I was using to make purses, but it was still a struggle. And then my husband gifted me with this Juki 2010Q on my 60th birthday two years ago. So that tells you my age. I'm going to have to get my needle threader again. Yep. Like it's got a little fuzz in the needle hole. Yeah, see that fuzz? Can we get rid of that? Okay, let's get her going here. Now I'm not going to change my bobbin. No one's going to see it. thread might not work. Glide, I think, seems a little bit thicker than this embroidery thread. Try it again. Look how easy that was, threading it. Now I got it mixed up though. Oh my goodness. a long time. Let's start here. Back stitch. Back stitch. And it did it again. I think the zipper's tearing it. Oh, goodness me. That stuck, so I'm going to try it again. Yeah, I got it threaded, right? Right? Yep. If I can just finish it with this thread and I won't use it again. the zipper thrown on. I keep throwing over here. I'm used to my waste basket being here, but it's over here because y'all are over here. Is that a good picture? Let me turn around that way. Okay. 
Maybe because I have the different textures of thread and the bobbin in here. Okay, so I'm going to sew the pocket together. It's a typical way to do your pocket. Just fold this up. And just match it. This looks a little wrinkled here, but no one's going to notice. So let's see. I need to keep it as a seam allowance, but I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to go to uh, a half an inch. And because we're going to be cutting it out of the seam allowance, you need to do your, if you're doing the larger one, you need to do your zipper pocket um, sewing in. So I got it a half an inch. And my thread is shredding. Okay, I'm down with this thread. Let's get another one. back to our regular thread, which is the Guterman. I have not ordered Kasaya's yet because I've got other thread. I don't want to order any new thread. I'm trying to be thrifty. All summer long, I would not allow myself to buy any fabric or um, vinyl or faux leather. And use what I have. I didn't buy any zippers, even though I think I need zippers to finish um, sewing my stash. I did go and buy that bundle that they had. Um, I can't remember who was. I, I did it through uh, Spencer Og, Diane with Spencer Og, and it was 25 patterns for $25, I think it was. That was a steal. And normally I don't do that unless um, I like at least four to five of the patterns and I'm going to sew them. And so I did. So I bought it and I can't wait to start getting so start sewing on those. Okay, so let's do this again. I'm just going to go over what I just sewed. down so this is going to be cutting it close here to say one more stitch and that will be half an inch right by here using binding to cut so we don't need to leave any openings and that's the wonderful thing I used to be so afraid of the binding but now I am loving it so to keep it out of the seam allowances I'm going to trim those corners that's why I did a half an inch and you can trim your zipper trim all the corners. You can even trim a little bit of this just to make yourself feel comfortable about not getting it in the seam allowance. And there you go. Here's your zipper pocket. So now we're going to attach this, base this on Here's my zipper pocket. I did it backwards. Oh well. I usually zip it from left to right. Wasn't paying attention. So now we're going to attach it to our main back piece. And you can match up your notches. And I do use clips even though we're just basting. Because it's a circle. 
circles aren't easy to sew. I start at the center and just go out and around. Do a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other. You can match the bottoms if you want, but sometimes it doesn't always come out. So I just go a little bit at a time, but this one looks like it might match, so. I really need to start when I do stuff like this, write it down what I do because I just fly by the seat of my pants and get it done and not figure out the size. I just figure out the size as I go when I add extra size and not write down and not remember, okay, what did I do? I really need to start writing it down. The brain is not what it used to be. And face planning twice. <sighs> you think it knocked some sense into me. Okay. I think that's good. One more for good measure. And I'm gonna do a basting stitch in number four on my machine. And we're just going to base this on all the way around. I do, of course, I do one eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around when I'm basting. And my foot that I have on the Juki is the hinge foot that is basically a hinge zipper foot, and it's mainly what I sew with until I do quilts and then I'll do I'll switch to my regular quilt. Okay, trim your threads. And we base it on. And just gotta remember when you're putting you're attaching the back you have your zipper facing forward because the first one I did I didn't do that and my zipper was upside down. And not only that, I somehow uh, sewed it closed. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how I do things. It is sometimes. It's just the way it is. And I totally mess up to have those days. Okay, so we've got, now we've attached this. Now we want to attach, based our um, bottom gusset lining, to our bottom gusset main piece. And then all our pieces will be basted on. And we can start sewing just like the pattern says. And then um, the only thing different is when we get to put the pieces together, the last two main circle pieces, we um, do binding before we attach the other one. So we'll sew the circle on, add the binding, sew the other circle on, add the binding, and then we're done. That simple. Okay, let's place this on. our threads now the bottom guesses done so now we're going to go to the 
front zipper gusset and the back zipper gusset. And we're gonna add our zipper, our main zipper. So I'm gonna, they really don't need to be marked because they're the same length. So it's just your normal, whoops, drop the zipper. Where you add a zipper. Excuse my head. So I roll over the zipper. So I want my zipper facing to the left. I'm going to put my zipper front gusset on top and I'm going to attach it. Is that how I want to do it? I want to do this and face down. Either way, either way. Let's do that. So you put your zipper gusset down, I mean up, facing up. Your zipper is still to the left as far as open and closing. And then we're going to add the zipper. And I always do just a quarter inch. Um, when I'm doing zippers. As far as seam allowance. Attach this. Do I want to change my thread? Oh, I don't think so. I'm just going with it. So I'm going to go quarter inch into an attached stitch, which is two and a half on my machine. Back stitch. And see, because we've already attached the lining, we don't have to worry about anything except just attaching the zipper to the piece. It's real simple. Even though I may make it complicated, it's really is simple. Move your zipper. Pull it out of the way. away the seam allowance away from the zipper and top stitch and it's going to be kind of thick because I've got the Decaville heavy not heavy light and the woven piece but we can do it you just gonna have to keep watch on it you can't iron it down with the you know, turn it to a top stitch length, which is four on my machine. I'm doing a four today. Usually I do three and a half. So I'm trying to keep it down. It's a little bit of a struggle. You just got to work with it. Now you might have to put on your um, Teflon foot, but I haven't had to yet. So I'm going with this foot. Fold it back away from the zipper. You hear the birds? I have my window open. It's a beautiful day today. Yesterday, my husband and I went to um, some apple orchards. And I got some apples. I thought I was getting a bushel, but I got half a bushel. And I'm gonna can, make some apple pie filling and some apple butter. And I'm gonna make some apple cider. Instead of 
combine that. I use a lot of apple cider. Um, it helps with your digestion. So I usually have some with water and honey in the mornings. Okay, there's that side. Now we're attached the back zipper gusset. As soon as I trim these threads. And I'm just going to put this on top of here, or you can do it this way. And then we're going to fold that back. Just like the front. So let me do that for you. So lay this down, put the zipper on top. and attach it. Um, when you do your Decaville light, I do it on the uh, main pieces to give it stability because this faux leather is very soft and it, it gets thick when you're trying to top stitch and fold it back but it works. You can do it. Okay. Quarter seam allowance. Oops. Turn it to a two and a half. Attachment stitches are too far out. My sisters, my oldest daughter's sister-in-law is due in November, and they're having a shower for this month. And I'm gonna make our baby quilt like I did for my Abigail, my firstborn, Bexley, and um, my Abigail is pregnant again. Okay, that didn't come out even. Why didn't that come out even? Um, I might trim that to make it even across. It didn't see how it didn't come across even there. It's a little bit closer here, but I don't know. I'm not sweating it. I'm just gonna top stitch, fold this back. It's 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 thick. You can do it. I got a message up there. Let me move that out of the way. Okay, okay I accidentally cut you off. So we're top stitching the zipper. Turn to a four on my machine stitch length. And just work with it as you go down. I love um, red and teal together. I just think it looks so nice. Personal opinion, but that's what I love. to whoops I can leave that there I want to go even these out where's my little
those on one side. And there's the other. So I'm gonna have a lot of trash on that side. <laughs> gonna keep throwing it down there. Now I'm going to burn this zipper part. So it doesn't shred. Okay, so that's our zipper. And you can sew if you want, I might do, just on the end, just so the zipper doesn't come off. I mean, it's no big deal because you can reattach it. security here okay my bad the next part you should do you should attach your handle before you attach your bottom gusset and so what you're going to do is you're going to measure one inch in and you're going to do it on a wider part of your gusset the back gusset so you measure an inch in and I go where I top stitched just below that and I measure you want it close to your top stitch as possible. So I measure an inch in and I mark it. And we're going to do this on both sides. Where is my chalk pen? Here it is. Okay. So, measuring one inch. Then I'm going to do this side, same thing, right below my top stitching. I'm going to measure one inch in, mark one inch in. Then we're going to take our strap and I put my strap connectors on before I probably should have. I, mean, I, I hardly use them anymore so I forget how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at that one inch line. Now pick the side you like on your strap. See what side I like. I think I like this side. So I got to clean that. I got glue on there because I glued my strap handles on too. Maybe I'll do the other side. We're going to do the other side. So you take it and you start your strap right there. And you go just below. your top stitch line to attach your strap. And you could put double side tape, which I'm going to since I have that strap end on. And we're gonna sew a square with an X. So you line it up your mark and then just below your stitch line and we're going to sew a square let me show you what I did on this other one so here's your bottom strap and you're going to sew you mark one inch up and then you're going to sew a square with an X And normally you would start at the end where your strap is, but since I did a strap, um, what do you call these things? I don't remember, but y'all remember. So I'm just gonna start right on the top of that. And I'm just gonna do my square and I'm gonna do a three. And I'm gonna back stitch across. And then I'm going to, I should have started. Um, 
and then I'm going to go up a little bit. I'm going to go up, I think you're supposed to go up an inch, but since I have that strap in, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, square. And mark it where my where I should go across the line here. Does that make sense? Normally I measure, I would do it further in, but I had that metal strap uh, decorator thing. I don't remember the name right now. And so I'm just going to mark an inch from that, but it's going to be a smaller square. It would be a larger square if that thing wasn't on there. Hope that makes sense. And let's see how I want to do this. I'm just going to go across because I don't want my foot to hit that. I'm going to go across and I'm going to turn around and come up towards it, up towards it. It's kind of crazy, but that's what I'm doing. I'm going to turn it with my needle down, trim the threads. I'm going to follow the Ari stitch line. Now I top stitch on the thing. Oh, wait. That did not. Am I at a bottom? Let's see what happened here. No, there's my bottom. It just didn't catch. Okay. Let's do this again. So I'm going across right here where I drew the line. I'm going to back stitch all the way back. Oops, too, too far. I'm going to come up on the same line I top stitched for the strap when I was connecting it. Go up to that line and back stitch. And then go over to this line and go up. And back stitch. And then go across. I'm probably doing it the hard way. <laughs> so this is just how I'm doing it. And I could come back across here. I'm just gonna cut it. I didn't. And then you make your X. This is probably the, the more difficult way the way I'm doing it, but I'm getting it done. I don't know why this is giving me a hard time here. I want to make sure my bottom thread is, usually it doesn't matter if it's up or not, it catches, but I just want to make sure. Okay, now I'm going to go the other way. And make an X from the bottom to this. Cut all my threads. That's a mess back here. You can, um, which I may do, change your thread for the bottom so they don't see your messy, <laughs> your messy work, or my messy work at least. So let me change my bottom thread. So that's the X for the first one. Maybe I need a little bit more light here. There we go. It's getting dark. Let me change my bobbin. Now my thread came out and my needle. I'm just going to put on white. It's kind of a cream color.
haven't even changed my needle. You know, I just changed it. I think I did anyway. I really need, I really need to mark the date I've changed my needle so I can look back. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to slide our D-ring on. All the way to the end. Now, um, I'm using a larger D-ring because, dodo me, I put the um, strap things on this thing and the smaller one won't go over it. It would if it had little strap decorator thing wouldn't go it wasn't on there would it go over so I'm using a little bit larger one put it all the way to pull it all the way there and then you're going to do a little hump sticking my tape do too long a piece of tape because this is going to be like a little hump let me show you like that. It's going to be a little hump. And so you don't, you don't want your tape showing. So just remember that when you're putting the sticky tape on to help you do a short piece. So pull the D-ring all the way back and just push it up just a little bit and then just sew that. You're going to do another square. Now they say, I think they said in the um, in the video that's three quarters of an inch difference that you go back. But I can't remember three quarters of an inch, or you start at three quarters of an inch sewing if you were to measure it. So you can put more tape on here if you want. I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to turn around this way. Make it a little bit easier. And make sure you keep it closer to your top stitch, even with that. And just... Start sewing up another X box. Didn't do a big hump like I did before. I'm going to turn it this way and see if I can sew that. Nope. Okay. That's why I back stitched. So now I'm going to move it an inch down. Is it an inch or three quarters? And maybe an inch from the sewn line to three quarters of an inch. I think I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. No, because you do. Oh, see, that's what I forgot to do. Okay, so what you do before you sew this on, once you mark this, go back, back it up before we sew this on. You mark on here your back gusset an inch. And then you mark your strap an inch. I apologize. I'm getting ahead of myself. So you mark a strap from the bottom, the end, and you mark an inch. And then you go two inches from the bottom. And then you go three inches from the bottom. So let me go one inch, two inch. My two inches is a little crooked. So I'm going to wipe that off and do it again. Follow the video instructions from Sally. That still looks crooked. I think it's because of the strap thing. So two inches and then three inches. And I erased the three inch, so I'm gonna mark that again. And that's what we should have done here. So that's one inch, one inch, 
and I should have done two inches, so I'm gonna leave that. That would have been two inches there. Dodo me. Don't wanna take that out. I'm gonna take it out. Just make sure you mark it before, and that will be your sew line, sew lines. It's not a guessing game. Like I was trying to guess before, and then it came to my brain. You're supposed to mark the handle one inch, two inch, and three inch. So, let me take this out. That was easy. I'll get the string off of here without poking it. Okay, let me take the D-ring off. And let's mark this correctly. So one inch from the end. Two inches from the end. Is my head in the way? Two inches from the end. And then three inches from the end. And so my marks are still showing here. So you mark your your end on your gusset, then you mark your handle, and then you sew it. And then that way you'll know where to sew. So now you put your D-ring on. You have your markings, you push it up a little bit, and that's where you're gonna sew that white line. Push it up a little bit. and sew on your next mark, which will be your two inch mark on your handle. You just push it up. <clears throat> See, I'm gonna have more of a hump now, like I'm supposed to. Let me get that thread. Okay. You can, use, again, use double side tape to help you if you like. But I'm not going to. We're going to do a square again. No one's going to notice those markings, and I could probably steam them a little bit where you won't see a little close up a little bit on the vinyl. We'll see. Now I go to my next mark, and that's where I do my box. So I'm lining up from the top stitching. You do your square how you like to do them. So there you have that. Okay, so before you sew this, you need to slide your other D-ring on. Let me take that thread out here. So now you'll remember, since I made the mistake, now we're gonna start sewing this again with our line. My line is still there. My double side tape is still there and I'm just gonna make an X, a box and an X.
Okay. Goodness gracious. That's one of those. Don't do as I do. So now we're going to, we still have our marks, hopefully, a little bit. We move this back down here. And we still on the next line and do a square. And I've kind of erased mine, but I kind of see it. If not, just take your marker. I mean, take your ruler. Here's your one. There's your two. There's your three. So no big deal. I don't use a friction pen anymore on the top of my faux leather because even though the ink will erase, the markings from the pen doesn't. So that's why. So I push it back just a little bit and I'm going to sew on that line. Keep your D-ring out of the way. Make sure I got it where I'm lined up from my um, top stitching. And I'm going to sew across. And then I'm going to go to my other line and I'm going to sew across there. And I'm going to go up my stitching on my handle. And then I'm going to do an X. And then I'm going to go up, did I go this way already? I don't think I did. Go up this way. Let's see if I can do an X back this way. And there's my X. Okay. So there's your handle. These are going to attach the chain things. You can order the chain things from Sally tomato but I didn't so let's work on our little chain connectors need to sew the other one and I have it here somewhere here it is okay I left this one because this is when I show you this which y'all most y'all probably already know how you do it but this is how I do all my handles my straps um, I draw a center line. I put tape, double side tape down it. And do I have it right? Yeah. I just fold to the center. Do the other side, fold to the center. And then I fold it over. And then I clip it to sew. And you're just going to top stitch all the way around. One eighth of, a cent of an inch seam allowance. Do a number four on my machine. And you may need to use, depending on your machine, I have uh, lightened the foot pressure on my presser foot and my regular, my hinge foot Zipper fit works fine with this leather, the leather. So we're just going to stitch all the way around. four but it, it'll take me over where I need to be on the strap so I just shorten my stitch length on my um, machine and then I turn it back to my top stitch I learned that from Tori with seems legit Okay, I went ahead and added the end caps to the strap, and my advice to you is don't do that. 
it takes away the length of the um, strap connector, which if you do the chain, you won't have to worry about it. But um, unless your strap is longer than 41 inches, <laughs> like mine. But anyways, it makes it more difficult to do the square. Like I did a tiny, tiny square here. But it is what it is. So you add your D-ring. Remember, this is the chain part. And you keep it measured right here. I measure them together. Make sure they match. And we do the tiniest of squares because we've got this pretty silver thing on. They look good. I mean, you know, they look pretty. But as far as sewing, it's a hindrance. Anyway, so let's go ahead and sew these on. I'm going to put it at three. And do the best you can with a square on this small, small part. And then I'm going to come around to the top of this. I mean, to the top of the, what are these things called? I can't remember. I'm having a brain freeze. Normal for me, brain freeze, senioritis, and that's not high school. So I trim my thread to clean it up before I do my little X. I've done about one, two, three, no, I've done four, I sold one of them. I've done three red round purses and I don't have any takers. So maybe I should give it away. I need more watch hours. So I'd appreciate you watch all the way to the end with me. So now I got that on. Now we're gonna attach it to our zipper gussets. And you want it where the, if you're doing this the way instead of the chain, you want the inside that's normal our inside facing towards the handle. Because when you carry it, it's gonna show this. And that's the side you want it to show, not this side. I mean, I guess you could sit aside with the uh, pretty end cap things on, but let's see. I'm gonna measure this end. Actually measure this end. And then we're gonna attach it to here. We add our D-ring. We're gonna attach it to here with a minimal square. Oh, you know, I need to finish this square. See, I get ahead of myself. I made notes to keep myself on track. <laughs> Did I even read them? No. No, well, of course not. So I'm just doing an X right now. Just to, since it's so tiny, my little square. Um, I want to keep it secure as possible. Make sure I have you on camera, not my big old head in the way. And maybe just a bit. And then you get the whole. There we go. Okay, so I'm attaching this to that, making sure it's going back towards the handle, and I'm going to sew it. I'm going to put a clip on just to help me out here. A little cumbersome, not bad. This is the first time I've used the uh, strap in covers. They're pretty, but I think with this, if you're not gonna get the um, chain from Sally Tomato and you're gonna do it like I do it, I wouldn't do the strap ins. And I gotta do a little, little tiny box. Hopefully I don't hit the blue ring. Oh, 
bit less slow because I feel like I'm getting close to it. Okay, trim my threads. My scissors are getting dull. And now I'll do my little X box. See a thread on here. See lots of threads on here. Okay, I'll get those in a minute. Let's just finish this. One thing at a time, Renee, one thing at a time. We can get sidetracked here. Yeah? At least I can. Do the other X. Other side to the X. And trim your threads. I'm looking forward to sewing some new purses. So there's our ends. That's going to be like our chain. And now we can attach the gusset, the bottom gusset. These are zipper gussets, front and back. Then we're going to do the bottom gusset. Remember, we already sewed our, li our lining to our gut, our main piece. So all we have to do is sew the gusset to the zipper. And it doesn't equal, so I'm just putting it in the center. I can't remember what they said on the video. Just follow, as far as all this goes, you just follow the video. The main thing you need to do when you're adding lining is do your zipper uh, pocket and add it first to the lining. And then your name tag first to the line um, to the main piece, and then sew all the lines to the main piece, and then you just follow the instructions as far as attaching things, and then we'll do binding. It's pretty simple. So I'm just going to center this here. I have my windows open, and my husband is burning yard waste out there. It smells good at first, but then after a while, it's like. <laughs> Okay, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do about two and three quarters. Okay, that's one side, whoops. Never fails, I dropped something, always. And now we're going to attach the other side like this and do the same center it the best you can. I didn't really center it out too well. It's okay. It all comes out in the wash. And three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Put that right there. Now this one, it must have really cut pretty bad. Let me see here. Oh, I know the zipper's open a little bit. That's why. Okay. We can always trim it, so I'm not worried about it. Three eight seven inch seam allowance. I'm gonna keep moving my machine with my knee left here. This gets pretty thick, so um, you might want to go slow on your domestic machine. 
Mine seems to handle it pretty well. And then we're going to turn it right side out and top stitch. This gets a little tricky, but you can do it. I put the um, seam allowance towards the bottom gusset. I'm going to turn it to a four on my machine. And I'm just going to top stitch. You might need to put your Teflon or sew the whole time with your Teflon foot on. But um, on this Juki, the hinge foot, the hinge foot seems to do pretty well. Without me having to put on the Teflon foot. Now I've had, there are some models I do have to use the Teflon foot with. They're pretty sticky. It tends to get thick around the zipper, so that's where you may need to crank it and go slow. Trim all my threads before I start putting the back end on and the binding. Got lots of threads I haven't trimmed. Lots and lots. I think I might, I'm just thinking, thinking out loud. Since I have, if, I, if I'm gonna try and sell these again, post them and sell them. And if they don't sell, I may keep this one for myself because I love the teal and red and sell that other. Actually, yeah. This is actually teal. I kept thinking it's teal and red, but it's got red on it. This one's teal and red. So I got the red and I got the teal on the inside. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. I just don't like the handle how I did it. I mean, it's fine. It's just that I put two pieces together and I didn't know. Um, I don't have an edge coat. So I just painted it with fabric paint so you wouldn't see the ends. And... Um, that kind of bothers me. And then I did the um, strap so thin, which is fine. It's just that's kind of wonky. The um, crossbody, what do you call this thing? I can't think today. Whatever it is, slider. It's kind of wonky. So I really don't want to sell that because it's kind of wonky. That's my main thing. The thin strap's okay. It's just I didn't have a small enough slider. Um, I don't want people to have to struggle with that. So it may be a giveaway. Just give away the farm. I had a lady, a friend in my uh, small group the other night say, she has a purse for that matches every outfit. <laughs> and my leader said, of course she does. She sews them all. We do. We can just make what we want. Okay, so there it is. So now we're going to take, this is the back, and I want to mark the center. So we're going to match these two together. Match them up. And mark the centers on each end. I think I'm just going to mark it with a erasable. Maybe not. Just a little snip. Do the same for the other side. Make sure it's this is why my scissors become dull because I'm cutting more than thread on them. Did that go through? Let me try that again. check. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now you can do the bottom. And you don't have to worry. The thing I like about adding your own, um, attaching your lining to the main pieces is that, you know, a lot of times these kind of, when you're trying to sew it, you get more lining than you do binding. I mean, than you do main pieces and it kind of bunches up. So this is much easier to work with. In my little opinion, that's just me though. Okay, so we're going to take our back piece that's got the zipper part. It's already been marked and we're going to attach it to the back of this. I can see the zipper part the front on this the front. You can consider it back if you want. So we're going to look at our marks and match them up. Oops, I'm going to turn the wrong side out. It's a beautiful day here today. I really would like to go outside in a little bit. This, this is shredding a little bit, but I'm not worried about it because we're going to put binding on top of it. Okay, make sure your zipper's upright at the top. Match the top because the first one I did, I did my zipper upside down. You know me, if it can be done wrong, it can be done wrong. Just like I was getting ready to do there. Okay, matching my center. I start at the top and I work my way around. Oops, there goes one flying. And what you can do, you can take the bottom. Sometimes I've done it with this circle bag, sometimes I haven't because they don't always match. So find my center. This is how you're supposed to do it, but a lot of times what I'll do with these round circle purses is I start up top and I'll do a little bit here on this side. And then I'll go over here and do a little bit. And what you can do is you can go to the bottom and do a little bit more on one side. And do a little bit on this side, other side. A little bit more. Kind of dark. Is it kind of dark? Let me turn on some light here. Maybe that's better. We're going to have enough light. Sorry. And you're just going to work it in. Look at all those threads. Cool. Sticking up. Okay. Then I'm going back up top and work it more around. 16 for the gusset should be plenty, hopefully. Hopefully, see I need to trim that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin it to the lower part. Do you know how it was uneven on the gusset where it sticks out a little bit? And I'm gonna just pin it around to the lower part and then I can just trim that off. Does that make sense? Let me show you. Let me show you. You can trim it off beforehand if you want. And so instead of clipping this to the top part and then come back down, I'm just going to come back around because I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim this part off. So I'm just doing how it goes around. Does that make sense? Y'all, I tell you, I may confuse you. I hope not. It's been a while since I've done videos. I am so out of touch with it. Not that any of my other videos were any good, but I do the best I can. That's all I can say. And so if it's a little big, just work it in. Seems like the round circle is bigger this time than the gusset. So you may need to do a little bit bigger. 
tad bit bigger, just a tad bit. And same thing on this side, I'm going to match it to the lower part and not the top, the part, the extra part. We're going to make it work. I'm going to have to redo a little bit of it. Side. See if this is lacking, and I can add some more over here. Move it a little bit here. You can always go a little bit over your gusset to make it work. So my gusset is still a little small than the circle, the larger circle. So maybe 16 and a quarter or 16 and a half inch gusset. We'll see. I thought I had enough, because before I did 15, I think, and I had to really struggle because it was too, too small. And so I went and bought 16. I don't know. I'm gonna make it work though. While I'm working this on, I'm going to pause you and then I'll bring you back when I finish it. Okay, let's sew this thing. Um, also, I did my clips upside down, which I shouldn't have done. They should be like this instead of all like that. It's easier to pull them off when they're right side up on the side that you're sewing, but it is what it is. So I'm starting at the bottom. I don't want to start there where it's a little bit over. I'm going to start over here. And my arm's not in the way. Let me move it a little bit. Oops, sorry to shake you up. Hopefully that's better. I got my stiletto out to help me keep it together. Because it's a little thick with the, um, and I think it's 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. No, I do a quarter inch because I'm gonna come back and do binding um, a little bit, um, like almost a half inch maybe, a little over a quarter, scant half inch. So I'm gonna put a quarter inch seam allowance. Let me get it under there. And I'm keeping my teal thread in because one's gonna be covered, but if any of your thread shows on the other side it'll be teal and it won't be as noticeable. So hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to turn it at a 2.5 and I'm going to back stitch a little bit and then go on around. And you have to have the strength in your hands which I don't have a lot of and just hold it down. And I'm following this and not the extra I have. I'm just going to cut that off. It's not going to make a world of difference. Or it hasn't yet since I've done it. I'm just pulled over a little bit. And follow my quarter inch. And just take your time. And this might get a little tricky over this hump thing, but you can do it. It's kind of moving. I want to pull my teal more. Oh yeah, I should have cut that other off, but I didn't. So I can see my quarter inch. Elbow getting in the way. I 
and make sure you pull your D-ring connectors, your little um, the fake chain thing, out of the way so you don't sew over those. things are hard to come off and you don't have them on right. And just work it all the way around and make sure your little everything's out of the way. because it's moving when I had it together. like it's getting loose and it's hard to get it to come over to where it's supposed to be. I'm not going to spread it out. I can trim it and I can trim the other one when I do it. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. Oh, I gotta give my arm a rest. I fell and face planted the uh, Saturday and my elbow is still swollen from it. Let's see how this is going to turn out. Y'all probably do a very job in me on this one. This one seems to be giving me a hard time, of course, on foot. Okay, see I got all that extra? I'm just going to trim it. See what it looks like. I'm going to put my clip away. Give my arm a rest. Before I trim it, I want to look at it first. In case I need to correct anything. Why you start with the back <laughs> okay and I need to steam it with the iron and then clip it like it says that's not bad at all nope not bad at all let's see this part right here just a little fixing they'll be good okay so now we do binding before we attach the last piece and do the binding and then we'll be done Oh, we gotta do the crossbody strap. Forgot about that. I saw it, I just didn't put on the clips and everything. Okay, so that's the inside. I'm gonna trim it down. To match the other one. Just trim off all the extra.
And now I gotta get my binding out. I wish I had some red binding that would fit this, but I don't. So I'm just gonna do black. Black goes with everything, right? I have some red, but it's too thick. I bought the wrong kind. I guess I could do it like that, but that's pretty thick. See, it's double fold and then double fold, and that would be pretty thick. And I wouldn't want, I could sew this together and then sew that together. It would match, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go with this one. This I got off Amazon and it's 25 meters, which is, this is one inch uh, binding and it's all cotton, I believe. I like the cotton. I did a stretch one time and it just, it didn't, I didn't like it as well. The elastic kind. So I just start and pull off enough here. Move my box out of the way. Go around, go around, go around. That's plenty. And I don't do it the quilt way. I just lay it over the top and clip it. Go around again one more time. I'm always second guessing myself. Did I do it right? Oh, mercy. Yeah, I dropped something else. I don't stress like I used to when I do all these things. Maybe I should, but I don't know. I just don't because people do not notice. Man, if you pick up a purse from the store and how it's made, we do just as well, if not better. So make sure I'm doing my clips right. Because we're going to sew from the gusset. And just fold it over. So while I'm doing this, I'm going to go all the way around and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've gone all the way around, but I want to show you what I do at the end. I trim, let me see if you can see that, to the corners a little bit so when I fold it, they don't show. It doesn't um, show on the side. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to fold it down where I trimmed it and fold it over here. And it's, well, that's not even. I need to tuck that under. But this doesn't show the underside. Like if I hadn't, sometimes the side of this part comes out and shows. Does that make sense? Anyway, I just trim it and I fold it over. And I place it over this. Lining up the even parts here and here. Caught it. And then I'm going to sew. Starting right before I folded it over, working into my needle, my foot. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to put it at three this time. Now I'm just going to back stitch. Where's my stiletto? There it is. This is easier than putting it together. Much easier. And I don't go all the way to the end. I kind of leave a little gap, right? Um, like when you fold it over, I, I don't start, I don't go all the way in, to the end to sew. I kind of keep it at a quarter inch. 
when I'm looking at my machine. Okay, so I can make sure it catches the other side. I move you to the other side, but there's a table there, so. Maybe if I move you, let's see. And if I don't get my big head in the way. You can see right there. Let's try that. My shoulder might be in the way. Let me see if I can move you up without my shoulder being in the way. Hopefully that's a better view. at a quarter inch. Again, you gotta make sure you move all your D-rings out of the way and your zipper tab or pull. And then you're pretty sure to catch the other side too. And I changed my thread to a black thread. Um, unless you're super confident about how it's gonna look and that your, all your stitches will be even all the way around, you can use a colored thread, but I use the same color thread so you can't tell. again. Just take your time. Go all the way around. It's hard getting those clips off sometimes because it's kind of thick. Okay, let's trim our threads and check and see if I caught both sides. Oh, I went up a little bit on that one right there. Now I need to go over that again. That one again I went up. I'm just going oh, sorry you're close to me so I hit you I'm just gonna come on this side and sew it down my thread is showing a little bit right there but I'm telling you people do not notice and I am gonna sew my binding down I want to make sure all my binding is sewn come down over here there's quite a few spaces this time. Is that it? And that's it. Okay. Let me trim my threads where I had to attach the other side of the binding on this. amazing how many things you miss trimming your threads okay so that's our binding and now let's attach the back the front side make sure when you're attaching the other side that you're attaching your name um, at the bottom and this is right side up So find your center points 
and I'm just going to clip it all the way around again. So not to bore you, I'm going to do this off camera and then I'll bring you back. Okay, so I sewed it all around. As you can see, I have overage right here that I'm going to trim. You do want to open your zipper. It'll make it easier. The toughest part sewing this is when you get to the bottom part because it's a little bit thick with the Decaville Light and the Woven Fuse too. Um, so I'm going to trim this and then all we have to do is put our binding on and we're done. Oh no, the strap. Forget the strap. I've sewed the strap. I just haven't put the, the lobster clasps on or the um, slider, which that's easy. Y'all know how to do that. So I'm going to trim it. I'm trimming it without turning it out and checking it, which might be a mistake, but we're going to go with it. I'm definitely going to need to sweep. Okay, so I trimmed that. So now I get my binding back out. I like how it comes in this little box with a little hole. Keeps it in there. And you just pull what you need. Except when it's acting up like that. Let's see. Also, before you top stitch, when you're doing the gusset, you can put a little bit of binding here if you want. I have not done that on any of mine um, because you really can't notice it because you're looking down this way from the purse. Um, I will put some, um, what do you call that stuff? Fray check right here because I'm not putting binding so my material will not fray anymore. So make sure you open your zipper when you're doing the other side, the front side. Now let's do our binding. And go a little bit over so you can fold it back. We're binding up. Make sure since I missed some spots, even though I had it um, over it, you could still see where I missed when I sewed. Do you really care and tell now? Right there and right there, but no one's gonna notice really. Don't sweat the small stuff. So I'm just going around. Trying to make sure y'all can see. Okay, so y'all know how I do this. I'm gonna go on around and do the um, clip the binding, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, here we go. Start at the bottom, which is the hardest part, basically, because it's so stiff, but you really want that in the purse. Not Decaville heavy, but just Decaville light and woven fuse too. Okay, I'm going to turn it to a three. I'm going to back stitch. you pull off your um, clips make sure you press down and not pull so you don't you're not pulling the binding off which is kind of hard but we can do it see like they get caught 
And again, over the zipper part it is a little thick. So I just you might have to walk it over on your machine. I know you have an industrial. This is not an industrial, it's a semi-industrial. Some people say it's not even a semi-industrial stuff. So I know it sews through thicker things better than my domestic, regular domestic. back over this way. out for my arm today to being swollen okay let's see if I missed anything I did not miss anything on this side there you go okay so now we're going to turn it right side out actually yeah I'm going to turn it right side out and then I'm going to iron steam the inside. I can burn some of these threads off. Oh, I did miss a spot right there. Sure did. Oh, no, that's on the other side. Let me sew this. I thought I got one, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, the other side was a struggle, struggle. So I'm burning my threads off. I have to get my thread zapper. I'm checking for all my little threads. Oh, I need to throw that again. That doesn't seem very gonna hold. Oops. I have a clip box over behind here and I got a clip box over here. I mean, this is my, over to my right is my newest clip box and they're stronger than my older ones because they become loose, you know. I'm just checking for all the little threads. Let me get rid of them. That I clipped.
I when I attached the the side, front side to it, I changed back to my teal thread, and then when I did my binding, I changed back to my black thread. Yeah, that seems okay, but this one seems like it may come apart. We'll see. Okay, so now another difficult part is turning it inside out or right side out. <laughs> So, it doesn't seem well thick when you're doing the Decaville and the woven cues on each individual piece, but when you start sewing together, it does. So, if your machine can't handle it, maybe just do two layers of woven cues, too. And maybe that'll be thick enough. It also depends on your, your vinyl. This was a soft vinyl. So I felt like it needed it. Oh. This is where you break your nails. I don't have any nails to break. Just a little bit. I don't have fake nails. These are my nails. And they are short these days. video they tell you which I've done and I think it works good is once you get it turned out you're going to clip it all the way around on one side and let it sit for an hour or two and then go back and do the other side and let it sit for an hour or two with the clips on it to train it like you go around and put clips all the way around here. I'll show you. Let me get it turned out and iron it. The steam helps it be more pliable when you get ready to clip it. Help it get its shape. Bad. It needs to be straightened and clipped. Pull out more, but what you're going to do, and you may need larger clips, like I have these big green clips, and it fits over, especially at this part right here where the zipper is. You're going to need a big clip. So they want you to clip it all the way around, and all you have to do is steam it. The, Clip marks will disappear. You don't have to worry about that. And then you clip it all the way around to train it on one side. And then let it sit for an hour. So let me iron it. Well, let's go ahead and do our strap. You know how to do a strap. I probably don't even have to show you how to do it, but I will. Um, and I, I ran out of these. I mean, it's. This is just hilarious with this whole video. But anyways, I ran out of the strap-in thing. So, this one's not going to have it. So, let me get my lobster clip and my slider. So, what you're going to do, I can't remember. Um, you, put, you can put your lobster clip on now and put it face down on the side that you're not, that's going to be turned out. So find your good side. And then I take my, you don't have to put it on now, you can put it on later. But then now I take my slider up, down, and I'm gonna sew this. And see, you really won't see this anyway, even though I'm short of strap end. So I need to change my thread. I got my little ducky from Juki Junkies from Gigi uh, when I order some thread. Okay, it's getting smoky out there. <laughs> Hope it's not going to come in the window. The wind is blowing this way now. 
we've been waiting to burn because here you can't burn from May through September 30th. So we've had a pile back there of yard waste. And when we lived in Florida, we had, um, just like we had recycle and trash and all those people come by, we had yard waste people come and pick up your yard waste. But they don't do that here unless you wanna pay for it, so. And we're not paying for it, so we burn it. So most people do, most people burn their yard waste. And we, we're on a lake, so it's, we have a little pile down by the lake. We call it our, our fire pit. One year at Christmas time, it was freezing. We built a fire down there and had hot dogs and marshmallows Christmas Eve. Oh, goodness. And it was probably, um, whoops. The last Christmas, we were all together. Kind of sad. Because now my kids... Our grown one's married. She has our first grandchild, and she's pregnant with our second grandchild. And um, they stay home at Christmas, of course, with their little one. They came here, you know, and they said they would come to our house at Christmas time up until they had babies. And that's what they did. And so now they stay home, which you don't blame them. You want to wake up at your own house with your little own Christmas tree and see your kids get excited about that. Um, so that was our last Christmas, that bonfire. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this. I'm going to try and make it a little bit smaller because, you know, I was short on my strap here. So my advice to you is make your strap longer than 41 inches. And I sew across the bottom first. I'm going to leave it at a three. And so my um, feed dogs don't eat my strap. I go, I turn it back over and I go up following up towards the slider, following the stitch line on my strap. I'm gonna go over. Now, see if I can come down. Usually I can't because my feed dogs will eat it, but let's see. That time it did not. When you have this in the way, a lot of times the feed dogs will eat them. So I'm going to do a little box X in the box. That's optional. If you don't want to do the X, you don't have to do the X. And now the other way. all your threads so many little threads and I dropped my lighter and I dropped it again oh mercy and I'm gonna burn off the threads the ones that stick up now so this is what you have this is the back side, and you want your lobster clip hanging down. And I'm going to take this up and over. And put it through. And 
to make it as long as possible here and see how long it is because it's supposed to be a crossbody. And then we're going to take our other lobster clip. And put it on this end. And make sure you put it where your, the, um, well, you can turn. So, see how the, this is like the back side. And so make sure you have your straps straight. And you have this down. See, this is going to take more length off of it again. So it may be, this may be for a very skinny person. <laughs> Crossbody. <laughs> oh, me. It is what it is. I'm going to go across. So now i got two areas i got to worry about. Hitting the needle there and hitting the needle here. And then I'm going to go across up here. As close as I can to the lobster clip without hitting it. Uh -oh. well, I heard my husband and last time um, my husband was burning in August which we didn't know the burn time was the no burn time was May through September and a neighbor called on him. I mean, whatever. And so I, I was checking because I thought, uh oh, here come the fireman again. The fireman came and told him to put it out last time. But we're not burning illegally today. And we didn't know on the last one. We didn't know we were being illegal. I think of the neighbor across the way. Okay. That's our strap. Connect it to our purse. With our little chain so you can see how it looks here. I love this silver with the teal. And I need to iron the inside and shape it with the clips. But there you have the circle bag with binding. So as you can see, this one didn't turn out as round as this one. And my straps are a little bit shorter. I'd say uh, make this handle a little bit longer. And definitely make your strap longer. But it was a rough day sewing this thing. I don't know. You just have those days. But it turned out okay. I think I'll probably order more um, vinyl from Bodio so I can make a longer strap because it is too short for me. I mean, it's not bad, but it is too short. Let me show you. I don't know if you can see that. I mean, it's not bad, but I like mine longer. And I love this, this faux leather. But as you can see, I dropped the other one, that uh, one's more round than the other. I mean, maybe I just need to iron this one more on the inside. It was just a rough day sewing this thing. I apologize. But you got the gist of it, I hope, of how add, to add the lining and the binding and the zipper pocket. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and that you would um, leave a comment, uh, any thoughts, any questions, and if you want to see more, that you'd subscribe and click that bell. Thanks, friends. See you next time.